The light of Christ is within us. As we begin worship, I acknowledge that the territory in which we live is Mi'kma'ki. As we worship, let us remember that we are all treaty people, and we live and worship on lands which are the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq peoples. May we live with respect on this land, and live in peace and in friendship with its peoples. Just want to acknowledge at this time as well that this past week, uh, more greatly distressing news has been shared regarding our past as a country and the uh, history with uh, Indian residential schools, as they were called. And uh, this is a, a sad development as 715 new unmarked grave sites have been uh, acknowledged and discovered in uh, Callis' First Nation from the Maryvale Residential School. And that name twigged for me, and uh, I look back, and sure enough, um, I've been there. I shared in a baptism at the Maryvale Roman Catholic Church during our Saskatchewan years. Um, there are five lakes in the chain of lakes in the Coppell Valley, where many First Nations peoples live. And Crooked Lake was closest to where we were, and the next lake, I mean, Round Lake was closest, the next lake was Crooked Lake, and it is on Crooked Lake that the Callis' First Nation make their home. So I feel, uh, by virtue of that, just a, even a connection to, to that place and those people and the tradition of faith in that place, which was not all good, but also harmful. And so today, as we gather, we acknowledge the pain and the, the harm that has been done and we will hold this in our prayers. These words of Marty Hogan from his hymn, All Are Welcome, gather us here today with an invitation. Let us build a house where love can live and all can safely dwell. A place where saints and children tell how to forgive. Build of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace, here the love of Christ shall end divisions, for all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. You are welcome here in this house of God. Bring your hopes and your dreams and your visions, and let us worship grateful to be together again. We are gathered in the love of Christ sharing in the grace of God, and we are encouraged and empowered by God's Spirit to be about our mission, a mission of transforming this world as God desires. Let us bow together in prayer. Holy One, it is good to be here this morning. It is good to be gathered. In your heart there is room for all, and a welcome that is deep and wide and rich. You connect us together in your love. You feed us with teachings of kindness, respect, and justice. You encourage us to look to the future in faith, trusting in your presence and in your help. You gift us with your spirit, O oh God, a spirit that is within us, enabling us to dream along with you of a world transformed, and of good things to come. As we share in worship today, we give thanks that these gifts of welcome and warmth and vision are ours. We give thanks that we're able to come together again in this place, to be united as a community of faith. And we give thanks that your Spirit is at work in us and others, nurturing in us holy dreams and renewed hope. Bless us in this time, and send us out when we finish to be a blessing, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to acknowledge that for those of you worshipping with us from home, I am the Reverend Jim Weber Cook, and I am here in the sanctuary of Scottsburg United Church, and hallelujah, there are people here today, and that is a reason to rejoice. Welcome to you, too, in this place. Our worship team this week includes our organist, Stuart Monroe, our lay reader, 
Lynn McLean. Lynn is a member of Lions Brook United Church. And uh, not by accident, I've invited her to read today because by profession she's a teacher. And it seemed good to have uh, a teacher involved as we celebrate the graduates of 2021. And also, Christine McKenzie is our tech person who is our videographer and looks after uploading our service. The gift of music is a little different in worship these days with the pandemic, but we are grateful to the choir of Scottsburn Lions Brook United Churches, who uh, will bless us with an anthem in a moment. And we have a special guest soloist today. His name is Dave Gunning, and we uh, welcome the music of Dave as part of our service with his permission and blessing. And come and pray to me, 
I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me, if you seek me with all your heart. I want to offer a story to you today for the young and the young at heart. And it is a, a special book, a story entitled God's Dream. You will certainly recognize the name of Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Uh, Desmond Tutu wrote this book in collaboration with Douglas Carlton Abrams, and it's beautifully illustrated by Nguyen Pham. And uh, I offer it as a gift to us on this day. God's Dream. Luckily, the illustrations are quite large, so you can even enjoy them. Dear child of God, what do you dream about in your loveliest of dreams? Do you dream about flying high or rainbows reaching across the sky? Do you dream about being free to do what your heart desires? Or about being treated like a full person, no matter how young you might be? Do you know what God dreams about? If you close your eyes and look with your heart, I am sure, dear child, that you will find out. God dreams about people sharing. God dreams about people caring. God dreams that we reach out and hold one another's hands and play one another's games and laugh with one another's hearts. But God does not force us to be friends or to love one another. Dear child of God, it does happen that we get angry and hurt one another. Soon we start to feel sad and so very alone. Sometimes we cry and God cries with us. But when we say we're sorry and forgive one another, we wipe away our tears and God's tears too. Each of us carries a piece of God's heart within us. And when we love one another, the pieces of God's heart are made whole. God dreams that every one of us will see that we are all brothers and sisters. Yes, even you and me, even if we have different mummies and daddies or live in different faraway lands. Even if we speak different languages or have different ways of talking to God. Even if we have different eyes or different skin. Even if you are taller than I and smaller. Even if your nose is little and mine is large. Dear child of God, do you know how to make God's dream come true? It is really quite easy. As easy as sharing, loving, caring. As easy as holding, playing, laughing. As easy as knowing we are family because we are all God's children. Will you help God's dream come true? Let me tell you a secret. God smiles like a rainbow when you do.
The second reading this morning is also taken from the contemporary English version of the Bible. Acts 2, verses 14 to 18, 22 to 26. Your young people will see visions and your old people will have dreams. Peter stood with the eleven apostles and spoke in a loud and clear voice to the crowd. Friends and everyone else living in Jerusalem, listen carefully to what I have to say. You are wrong to think that these people are drunk. After all, it is only nine o'clock in the morning. But this is what God had the prophet Joel say. When the last days come, I will give my spirit to everyone. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young people will see visions and your old people will have dreams. In those days, I will give my spirit to my servants, both men and women, and they will prophesy. Now listen to what I have to say about Jesus from Nazareth. God proved that he had sent Jesus to you by having him work miracles, wonders, and signs. All of you know this. God had already planned and decided that Jesus would be handed over to you. So you took him and had evil people put him to death on a cross. But God set him free from death and raised him to life. Death could not hold him in its power. Remember the words that David said about him. I always see the Lord near me, and I will not be afraid with him at my right side. Because of this, my heart will be glad, my words will be joyful, and I will live in hope. In his sermon on the day of Pentecost, the Apostle Paul as you've just heard, quoted words from King David, who said, I will live in hope. And the prophet Jeremiah, speaking to a people in exile who were feeling uncertain and even somewhat defeated, says that God has plans for them, plans for their well-being and for a future of hope. Hope invites us to look to tomorrow with anticipation. Hope invites us to look to the future with expectation. And hope that is rooted and grounded in faith also looks to tomorrow and to the future with a sense of trust. That since God is with us, things will be okay. Things will work out. We may not always get what we want, or things might not always be the way we want, but somehow things will work out. That's the gift of hope. With trust that God is with us, we need not be afraid. Throughout the whole of the Hebrew and Christian scriptures, that refrain comes up over and over again. Hope invites us to make plans and to set goals and to dream. In a way, you know, there are many parallels, I think, between the experience of the Hebrew people in their struggle back in the day and our experience of struggle today due to the pandemic. In both cases, people have experienced some measure of despair and a loss of hope because of their circumstances. In the midst of their struggles, which seem to stretch on forever, the Hebrew people longed for a return to, you know what, the good old days. But their hope for the future dwindled. And their sense of God's presence with them was diminished. And they started to feel as though life was without meaning. And they stopped dreaming, dreaming about what might be, what could be what they wanted life to be. And that's what's going on with them when Jeremiah speaks the words that Lynn has proclaimed today. He, uh, he says, yeah, you're not where you want to be right now. And life isn't perfect, but do your best to live in this moment. Even if you are in a different space and missing your homeland, Build your houses and plant your gardens and enjoy the fruit and vegetables from them. 
Enjoy your life as much as you can. Work for the good of your community because the good of your community, your life is dependent on. You may find yourself among people you don't really know or are sure about, but pray for the welfare and the good of that community because your welfare is tied up in the well-being of that community. And even though times look tough, Jeremiah says, look to the future, your future, with a sense of hope that allows you to dream again and to look forward to what will come, what will come by God's grace and help. Because God, God's plans for you are always for your well-being, for you to experience fulfillment and joy in your life. But you know, I also think Jeremiah might have gone on to say something like this. You just can't sit there and mope about it. You just can't, like, give up. You just can't be disempowered by the way things are. You have to dig in a little bit. You have to help yourselves by working toward a better day. By trusting in God's guidance and presence on your path, but by doing what you can. You need to dream again about your future. And you need to listen to those dreams within you and not let others tell you what you should dream. Interesting little part of that reading where he kind of says to them, don't listen to those people's dreams. They're not the dreams for you. You have to listen to what's inside your own heart. Don't let them tell you. My dream is within you as well. Which leads me to ask today, of course, what are your dreams for the future? What are you dreaming about and hoping for right now? Let me guess. I know that many have been dreaming of the day when this pandemic is over and behind us. And we can return to normal or whatever that new normal is going to be. We're dreaming of a time when we can have family gatherings again and gather for barbecues with our neighbors in the backyard. A time when we can go to concerts and theater, and live entertainment to be enjoyed again. We're dreaming about a time, many of us, where we can travel to be with family, somewhere that, that family beyond this local place or even this province, or where we can travel to explore new places again, or go to familiar favorite places to enjoy them. We're dreaming or at least I am, for a time when we can gather in grief without restrictions and limitations, where we can be there for one another in the ways we used to, shouldering the pain of loss. Perhaps we're dreaming about the time when we can come here and not have to be told where to sit. <laughs> or when we can rip those masks off and be comfortable again. These are some of the dreams which are being dreamt for our future. And I know that some dreams and hopes are personal. Some are communal. Some are for our family circle and some for our global community. Some are short-term dreams and some are long-term dreams. Some are quite easily achieved and others stretch us and demand a great deal of us if we're going to reach that goal or dream. So what are you dreaming? In this time, touch those dreams within you again today. The Ontario Lotto and Gaming Corporation, but you never thought you'd hear me say that for a moment. <laughs> the Ontario Lotto and Gaming Corporation has effectively, I think, tapped into this same message in their current advertising for a particular game of chance which is also being used by other lot of corporations across the country, including the Atlantic Lot of Corporation. The message is, you know, right? dream big. Dream big. And then, dream bigger. And the advertisements for this campaign have a dream coach named Max, urging people and encouraging people to dream to the max. Max's role is to help Bigify consumers' dreams. Yep, that's what I said, because I took that from their website. To bigify consumers' dreams. 
For theological and moral reasons, our United Church of Canada has historically and still does not support gambling or uh, games of chance. And there are many reasons for that, but one is quite simply, you know, many people put in their resources and one person walks away with all this largesse. Is that just and fair? There are other reasons too, and I'm not going to dwell on that today, but I think these folks are on to something in this campaign about dreaming and dreaming big. Albeit their idea of dreaming is getting financially rich and having more by way of material possessions than you could ever need. It's a dream, of course, fed by capitalism and by greed. And it's very self-centered and self-serving because the dreams are all about what I can get for me. But the message of prophets like Jeremiah and Joel, who Paul quoted, is very similar. Dream big. But just don't dream individually. Just don't dream for yourself. Dream for the well-being of your community. Just don't dream for material wealth. Dream for all those other important things that are needed and experiences that are needed for you to have a full, complete, and whole life. As the Lotto Corporation identifies this campaign, and I quote, begins to define a new purpose for the brand, helping Canadians to dream bigger than they ever thought possible. And you know, that's the same role of the prophets like Joel and Jeremiah, like Jesus himself, but in a much more expanded way, to help people dream bigger than they ever thought possible. To help us dream of a kingdom of God. A world in which justice is the rule, and peace is realized, and love is the order of the day. It's the dream of all people being valued equally, no matter what your skin is. It's the dream of equity, where some don't have way too much and some way too little. It's the dream of right relationships that flows like a stream that never dries up. It's the dream of a world where differences are celebrated, because that's part of the gift of diversity that God has given to this world. And yet there is unity achieved through respect and mutual understanding. It's a dream of a world where people share their joys and their sorrows and find life rich in community. It's a dream of a world where resources are shared and creation is cared for and honored. It's the dream of a world where children are not abused, where violence is not tolerated, and where hatred is banished. It is the dream of a world in which personal goals for self-fulfillment can be nurtured and achieved without stepping on the heads of other people and harming them. It's a world where borders don't divide people because of their religion or their race or their sexual orientation or their language or their religion or any other characteristic. It is a big dream, isn't it? It is a huge dream. Prophets, ancient and new, so often invite people to dream big and to share the dream of God for this world. At this time of high school graduations, in this month of June, it's a time, as you've been doing, for celebrating the high school year, the school years. It's a time for thinking about and celebrating all the learning and growth of those who are completing a stage of life, their education and graduating from high school. But it's not just a time for looking back. It's also a time for looking ahead. It's a time for setting goals and dreaming dreams and looking to the future with hope. High school graduation, I remember so well, is such a significant time in life's journey to that point. It's a time of endings and of new beginnings. It's a time for some of leaving home. It's a time for all of leaving school years behind. It's a time to discern the future, for setting goals, for pursuing dreams for one's fur further education, or perhaps for one's vocation in life, or dreams of what life or the world you want to live in. 
So many graduation cards speak about dreams for the future and pursuing goals, such as this verse by William Arthur Ward. If you can imagine it, you can achieve it. If you can dream it, you can become it. Achieving goals begins with imagining. Becoming begins with dreaming. Dreams are so important in the journey of our lives. Personal dreams, communal dreams, global dreams. And hope allows us to look to the future, holding these dreams tenderly and tenaciously. Those of you who have graduated from high school this week, including Sydney, Georgie, Lydia, and Lauren, and your classmates, I encourage you to hold to your dreams and to pursue them. And to remember that your dreams are valid dreams and good dreams. Follow your dreams for your life and for the kind of world you want this world to be. You know, having a dream is essential to becoming. And as you look to the future with goals and with hope, we celebrate not just your graduation from high school, but we also celebrate the dreams that are within you. For you, Georgie, Lauren, for Sydney and Lydia and all your classmates who are now high school graduates, here's some advice and encouragement for you. I'm sure you're getting lots. Canadian gold medal Olympian sprinter Donovan Bailey, his advice is this. Follow your passion, be prepared to work hard and sacrifice, and above all, don't let anyone limit your dreams. African-American political activist and abolitionist to help many escape slavery through the Underground Railroad to Canada, Harriet Tubman offers this encouragement. Every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. I'd like to quote a variety of people. World heavyweight boxing champion Mike Tyson comments, I'm a dreamer. I have to dream and reach for the stars. And if I miss a star, then I grab a handful of clouds. In Toronto born conservationist and environmental activist who was co founder of Greenpeace and later the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, Paul Watson says Follow your dreams and use your natural born talents and skills to make this a better world for tomorrow. Together, as Christian people with Jesus of Nazareth, we yet dream of the fulfillment of that kingdom of God. A dream nurtured in us, even now, by God's Spirit. A dream that gives us hope for the future. It's a big, big dream. But God's prophets and Jesus encourage us to dream big. That's the message of the final verse of a hymn and more voices draw the circle wide. Written by Gordon Light and sung by the Common Cup Company. Let the dreams we dream be larger than we've ever dreamed before. Let the dream of Christ be in us. Open every door. So be it. Amen. Some hands have held the world together. Some hands have fought wars forever. But tell me what shall I do with these hands of mine? Some hands have blessed a million people. Some hands help free the world from evil. So tell me what shall I do with these hands of mine? What shall I do with 
these hands of mine What shall I do with these hands of mine? The world could use a hero of the humankind through your school years, 
I've got to see eight years of that growth and change. And we are indeed proud of all you are becoming and who you are now. And we honor you today and we celebrate your graduation with you and we wish the best for you in whatever comes next. We share your joy in this achievement, completing your high school education, and we uphold you in our prayers, not just today, but in the days before you. Let us pray together. God, we thank you for all students who have graduated this month, and especially for those of our congregations who are celebrating this milestone in their lives and stepping forward into new goals and dreams and adventures. We give thanks for the learning and maturity that they have experienced. We give thanks for parents and grandparents and teachers who have nurtured and encouraged them. We give thanks for friends who have shared their school days with them and supported them. As they mark their graduation in the midst of the circumstance of a pandemic, which prevents the usual ways of celebrating this special event, May it yet be a happy time in which they are affirmed, affirmed for their accomplishments, and a time of creating good memories with their classmates. As Sydney, Georgie, Lydia, and Lauren move into a new stage of their lives, we pray for them, O Lord. Guide them in the days ahead to make wise and good choices. Guide them to pursue the dreams within them and the goals they are setting and guide them to continue to become all they can be, all that you've created them to be, as a blessing for this world. May your spirit direct them and may your love surround them in times of both success and disappointment. Encourage them to work toward the fulfillment of their hopes and dreams, that they may indeed make this world a better and brighter place. It's a custom for us to uh, present a, a gift to graduates to honor this time with them. And uh, Georgie and Lauren, uh, if you're comfortable, would you come up and join me here? Have to go up that way, sorry. Come right around Lynn there. She's, uh, she's a teacher, but she's a <laughs> just, uh, I don't know like, how much distance you want from each other, but just come there and, and I'll keep a little distance right there. Or just keep here. There you go. And uh, Sydney's on the table and Lynn, uh, Lydia's in our hearts. Um, along with uh, our prayers, we want to offer you a gift today, but also before that I want to offer the words of a famous poet, American poet Langston Hughes, his famous poem, Dreams. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams, for when dreams go, life is a barren field, frozen with snow. Lauren and Georgie, Lydia and Sydney, may God bless you at this special time in your lives. May the visions and dreams that are taking shape and living within you set a course for your future. May you believe in yourself and trust that God's love will always uphold you. And may God guide you in the choices you make and the goals you follow in this next part of life's journey. And you know what, at a time like this, it's a time for a little pomp and circumstance. Right, Stuart?
Sydney and to Lydia as well to honor them on behalf of our church. Isn't that fun? <laughs> well, I really wanted you to have the opportunity to walk up in front of a group of people, <laughs> not just a principal or a teacher or however it worked in, in your parents. So uh, we certainly celebrate you. Let's take a few moments before we close to offer prayer. God of all our hopes, we give thanks this day for the people with whom we're gathered here and for the opportunity to share together, to be together again for worship. This pandemic has taught us not to take for granted the opportunities and experiences of our lives. It has helped us in many ways to truly see what's important, what's vital for living that is fulfilled. And among those treasures is relationship and time shared together. We give thanks that We've come through the third wave of this pandemic in a relatively short time, and we are grateful for the opening up of borders and the loosening of restrictions, allowing us greater travel and times to be together with loved ones. We give thanks for the messages of prophets who call us to hope and to dream, trusting that God intends good for us and will be with us. We give thanks for Jesus of Nazareth, whose gospel teaches us to love each other, to act justly and kindly. It teaches us that you work through us, through our words and actions, in making the dream of your kingdom on earth come to fulfillment. And we give thanks, O oh God, for your spirit within each of us, lifting us up with encouragement, giving us hope for our future, and causing us to see visions of a new day and a new way enabling us to dream holy dreams, not just for ourselves, but for all your children. You hold all you have created within your compassionate embrace. And as you hold the lives of those torn by pain, sorrow, or hatred within your aching heart, we cry out for wholeness, and for healing, and for peace, for ourselves, for those we love, and for our world. In light of the news of the discovery of 751 unmarked graves at the site of the former Maryville Indian Residential School on the Cowess' First Nation in Saskatchewan, in light of the shame and the sorrow that sweeps across our country, we pray for Indigenous peoples of this land who have suffered much mistreatment and intergenerational trauma. May your healing presence gently transform the places of pain, and may hard truths be honored on this path toward healing and reconciliation. May your loving presence, O oh God, be a comforting reality for all who find themselves in grief, in despair, or alone. We think of the families of the victims of the collapse of that condominium in Surfside, Florida. What a horrendous situation, and likely what a great loss of life. God, may your transforming presence create generosity instead of greed, harmony in place of hatred, and justice, where now oppression and discrimination and wrongdoing prevail. May your spirit continue to nurture in us the dream of this world as you would have it, and empower us to reach out for that dream, empowered by your love, which we know most clearly through Jesus, who taught us to pray together in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
welcome you to rise for our closing words. When I was uh, growing up in Charlotte, New Brunswick, one of the rich experiences of my life was summer camp, church camp. And uh, for those of you from home sharing in worship, uh, an acknowledgement of Camp Shalor on the Bay of Shalor, our summer camp there run by the United Church. And it was at that camp that I learned an ancient Sanskrit blessing, which is known as Salutation of the Dawn. And I want to send you out today with these words. Look well to this day, for it is life, the very life of life. In its brief course lie all the verities and truths of your experience. The joy of growth, the glory of action, the splendor of beauty. For yesterday is but a memory, and tomorrow is only a vision. But today, well lived, makes every yesterday a memory of happiness, and every tomorrow a vision of hope. Look well, therefore, to this day, such is the salutation of the dawn. And may the love of Christ always attend you, the dream of God be in you, and the Holy Spirit inspire you today and in all your tomorrows. Amen.